Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, I sometimes like to take some shots of how my terrace is shaping up at different times of the year and what goes on in here. At the moment, the kids don't seem to be out here, even though the day is fantastic. Let me tell you what day it is today. It's the 19th of September, so it's close to the end of summer, so we're having... It's not quite autumn. It's still summer, definitely, but it's not... The, uh, as you see, the first thing is, last time I showed you this, I had got already the fence up, but it hadn't been creosoted yet, so now you can see it's got the same kind of colour as other aspects, the, the colours on the win window sills, which are the same going up the whole flats like that, um, and the same as I've, well, roughly the same as what I've put on there, although that changes, the colours that you put on would change. Now this is what it looked like before, I put a little bit, the end bit, down here, I don't know why he didn't create up that bit, but uh, let me take you round the thing and show you how everything's developing. Not only is it for you, but also a little reminder as to because I like the way the watching things grow, but then you don't remember how they were before because they grow gradually and it gives you a reminder. And later, you can say, Okay, this looks like this, and now it looks like this. This was quite tall, so my wife cut off the end of the yucca here and put it. In, in a new place, I think she's put it in there to make it grow a bit. So, so we've now got more yuccas um, from to make it very small and bushy. Let those ones down there grow up. So it's going to be quite lush, apparently. We probably don't want it to get too tall because we won't be able to fit it indoors for the winter. It's better to have more lower down ones than too many going up high. So anyway, that's what we've got yucca-wise going on. The lilac, of course, lost its flowers many months ago. These flowers came up, which Irina planted from seeds. So they took their time coming up. There's a little orange one down there. There's a pink one here. But they never all came up at once, and they didn't last very long either, really. So they're there anyway. There are some flowers for late summer. These peonies in bud for next year already, now quite low. There's one of my rokitniks or sea buckthorns. I'm not getting much by way of fruit on them. Another peony. This is a rose but didn't flower. Um, it's got lots of insect holes in the leaves. That's a gooseberry and it didn't fruit. Although it did manage to keep good foliage on it. Maybe I'll get some fruit next year. There's another peony. That doesn't have anything in it. I think it had my lavender that that did that destroyed that you saw earlier. That didn't win through. This has just got weeds in it. Um, I don't know what it had in it before, but it's just got weeds in it now. That's the dogwood, which is all right, but a little bit too leggy, and they pointed it outwards. Whereas I used to like to have it over by the swing here. I don't know why they put it there. There's another peony. There's another rose. Nothing by way of flowers and most of the roses haven't come out. There was a little tree growing here. They obviously pulled it up and a bit more of it's grown again. By the way, I'm just pointing this. I can't really see what I'm doing because the glare of the sun is so high. But uh, that's the tamarisk growing gradually in there. This is, was a peony that went that managed to dry itself out. This is a pity to watch how I walk past the roses. So they've got quite impressive thorns on them sometimes. This, that's your Burberry bushes, looking quite nicely coloured and healthy in this pot. And then the Euonymus in the middle, which is also managing quite well amongst it. Or you can do that with Euonymus. You can put it next to quite hungry plants and it's still okay. Another tamarisk there. That's my juniper. The best things are actually conifers. I don't tend to... you can't go far wrong. If you've got a difficult um, location like this, then uh, conifers can be a good option. If other things don't grow, sometimes conifers grow. And sometimes you've got a situation where everything else grows like topsy, but conifers die. So it all depends on what your conditions are. If you can't get other things growing, then try conifers. Another Barbary there, or Berberis as it's called in Latin, has a, my best 
of the, that's last year's Christmas tree, which I bought with roots. I need to get one about this time of the year. You, don't sh you, sh you shouldn't leave, if you want a live um, spruce, you can't leave it to the end. That's a Serbian spruce, incidentally. Um, but this is the fruit of the of the um, of, of the sea buckthorn. Let me just show you what that looks like. Uh, it won't be very just like pineapple. And inside there's a a seed like this, which you can plant, and maybe it will come up again. Full of vitamin C, full of great oils and things like that that do you good. You can you can put vodka on it and make a a sort of fruity what do you call them when you put vodka on something and bring the flavour of the fruit out into the alcohol. You can do that with them. Nalewka they call them in Polish. There's some strawberries. They had strawberries on, but of course now they're just a second year of it. They're just sitting in there, developing their sugars in their roots for next year. So, uh, soaking up the sun. They're looking healthy anyway, those strawberry leaves. Another one, that's sea buckthorn, that's a male, so you need a male in order to get anything. So, that's what we've got. That's what it looks like at the moment. There's always a bit of toys in that. I don't know what everybody thinks about it, but uh, there's always the odd bit of toys and things on here because obviously we've got kids um, and the swing and the playhouse and the slide and the seesaw and everything because the kids have you know, got to get some use out of it and then toys scattered around like this wooden snake and that monsters incorporated thing and here's Sophie on the table do, doing some painting before, she, before her piano teacher appeared and took her off to do piano in her room. And I'm sitting here and I've got this book here. I've had to mend it because it's, I'm using it so heavily that it needed mending. That's my Czech gold list. Bronze book at first. First I do a bronze book, then I do a silver book which is slimmer obviously. And then I do the gold list at the end which is the result after You've already been through two books of distillations. You get to the, your gold list in the end, bronze, silver and gold. That's if you want to do it the full way. And then after you've got the gold list, that's your gold. And you've learned the language by going through that process. You focus on the process, you take the focus off the actual language learning. And it helps you become, well, it helps you use your long-term rather than your short-term memory the way you would when you learn as a child, when you're not aware that you're actually trying to learn a language, it just happens, you're focusing on other things. That's the idea of it, and that's why it's successful. Okay? Happy? Let's, yeah, let's find out what's going on with Sophie. <coughs> Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. A bit of theory going on there. He's, he was in a band before. They've got some videos out on YouTube. Of, you can see him playing the piano in a in a pop song that was fairly popular at some stage. Okay. That's about all I want to say at the moment. Alleluia, 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 
today, which I didn't run, I walked a third off. But I'm looking on my back looking up at the sky, which as you see, between these buildings is an expanse of blue, with one building going up that way and the other that way. And I've got birds flying from time to time from building to building at the top. But when you try and photograph them or film them in any way, then all of a sudden, magically, they stop. No matter how, ma how many or how often they did before you got the camera out. The minute you get the camera out, that's when they stop. But those magpies... Oh, there's... Oh, no, it's just a, a grey crow up there. But still, at least if you know it's up there, you can focus up a bit. Well, there's a magpie. I don't know if I caught it. I'm up really, really high up there. I don't even know what that is. That'd be a... That'll be a seagull really high. There's a pigeon. And some more. There's, oh, there's a bunch of crows going in that direction. This is the difference between Warsaw and Prague. In Prague there aren't that many magpies and crows for some reason. And so the pigeons go unchecked because it's the magpies and the crows that would be reducing the amount of young pigeons which successfully come about. And they, uh, they, they go unchecked in... Uh, Oh, there's a magpie flying across there. Oh, and it's right on the side of the roof there, so maybe I can get a, a nice closer. So the camera can't do what the human eye can do. The human eye focuses up onto a flying bird almost immediately, whereas the camera would take too long and the bird is gone. So I don't know what kind of machinery you have to be. David Attenborough or somebody to get the kind of machinery you need really to, uh, to, no, te look, there's one. Sorry. 
see that's up too close and the bird will be out of it in seconds or a, sp a split second there's another one's flying, oh there's on the roof there he's about to go Grey crow. Oh, there's the. Some magpie play there. A second ago, out of the corner of my eye, and there's one still up there on the leaning over that, there we go I think well, I got a bit of it, that's about as good as it's going to get they defy me these birdie wordies it's very difficult to get them filmed as they should be they just walk off as well Well, I can tell you it's tranquil. That may be a uh, imposing sight with quite a lot of different um, windows overlooking, but actually they'd have to come right up to the window and look down to see me, so I don't feel as though there's all that many pairs of eyes bothering to look right down here. They're all looking at the broader view, and so even though they're all up there, I can't see really in there, and yeah, they could see me if they want to, but why would they want to? So I don't feel myself particularly exposed in that sense. I mean, basically, just me sitting here like this is going to be hundreds of people that can watch this film anyway, if they want to. They're going to see the same thing as this bunch up here are going to see, so it doesn't bother me particularly. It's worse if my wife comes out in a bikini, because then I get all jealous. I think people shouldn't see her, but uh, when it's just me with my fat stomach sitting here, it's not an issue. It's funny, they kind of know that somebody's training a camera at them because there was so much bird activity here before I got the camera out. It was really ridiculous the amount of birds that were going around. Now that I've got it out, they just don't want to play ball at all. Oh, there's one. I don't know if I'm getting it or not. But, uh, difficult to tell. Okay. Ooh.